Hello, my name is George Watkins. I, I'm in my workshop today in uh, Leicestershire and uh, I've been making a lot of boxes recently and uh, I've had a lot of questions about a certain box, how to do uh, a book matching technique. Um, so I thought I'd do a short video on, on how uh, I do it. Uh, it's a new technique for me. Uh, I've only done it a handful of times um, and I'm only really uh, uh, a wood turner, uh, I've got a, a bandsaw, a chainsaw and a lathe so uh, I don't really have a lot of background in, in cabinet making and, and proper woodwork. So um, this is the uh, one of the boxes I've made recently. Uh, it's an African blackwood box with a spalted beech uh, book match inlay in the lid. Um, I'm not going to talk about um, and show you how to actually turn the box and because and, I've covered that in other videos. It's just really how to cut the spalted beech, how to repair it, create the disc, uh, and then how to uh, put it into the lid, uh, you know, ready to finish the box. Um, so that's what I plan to do today, and uh, and I hope you enjoy. So I start with a um, a spindle blank, um, and uh, you can see the pattern. That you're after to book match on the end grain and this is spalted beech but any wood with an interesting end grain pattern um zebrano um bacote um anything really that has got some sort of lines or pattern that that when it's book matched or mirror imaged will, will give an interesting butterfly sort of a pattern on the top of the lid of the box but I think spalted wood is really going to be uh, the best. Now, uh, my box that I want to inlay it into is about 65 millimeters diameter. Um, so I want the book match to be just under 60 really, somewhere between 55, 60 millimeters diameter, the disc when it's finished. So this spindle blank is 60. So each cut across the end grain that I'm going to make will make two sets of discs um, but you have to start with the height while well, the square uh, of the of the finished diameter that you want um, but that'll make more sense in a minute when I, when I show you so I set the the thickness of the cut to quarter of an inch uh, seven mil um, now that's thicker than what you want it to be uh, for the disc but um, I found if it's any thinner, then when you go to glue the two pieces together to create the book match, uh, the too thin, there's not enough of an edge uh, to, to clamp together, uh, and you have problems with the, with the two pieces sort of um, kicking up uh, in the clamp. So, so I found 7mm gives a good enough contact point uh, to, to clamp them together. <laughs> So there's your two uh, slices, and like I say, they're, they're about 7mm thick, uh, and you can see straight away, there's, now obviously there's four possibilities for four different book matches, so you have to choose which pattern uh, you want most, but obviously one side, because it's 7mm thick, the lines will, will will start to run out so the book match won't be as good on one side as it will be on the other because you literally want the two sides that you just put the bandsaw blade through so that there's the best match but uh, on this one you know that would be a I hope the camera can see that that would be a, a really nice uh, pattern oh lost it now there you go that one that would be a really nice pattern that would be a really nice pattern they're all nice in a way, it's just which one you prefer. Um, 
I think I'm going to go for that one. Um, so I'm going to glue uh, and clamp that together as it is, and you will get um, when it's set, when the, when the glue's set, you will then get one disc out of the middle. But what you can do is before you you you, you want your disc when it's glued, you can run this through the saw again. Uh, to half its width, so about 30 mil, and you will have two pieces, 30 mil each side, which will then come back together and be another book match. So that's what I meant. Each pair will create two book match discs. So I just use normal uh, wood glue, uh, which at this time of year I keep in my pocket next to my body to keep it warm, because uh, middle of the winter. Um, and it really is just as simple as uh, putting um, a little bit of glue down, down the joining face. Matching it together. Just making sure it doesn't move. Wipe off the excess glue, and, and there's the uh, the book match. Just make sure those faces are flush. Just give it a little bit of extra squeeze. Make sure it's nice and tight. And then I put that at, at, at this time of year in the winter. I put that next to a little tube heater that I've got in the workshop to cure, just to dry. And uh, and I normally leave it overnight, um, just to be on the safe side. So once your uh, glue has dried overnight uh, and, and your, your book match is, is ready, um, prepare a scrap piece of wood uh, on your lathe and, and just uh, flatten the surface. And um, here's a book match uh, from another piece. Uh, I'm filming this all on the same day, so this is one I'd already done. And what I do is, after the glue's cured, like I said, I cut the sides off, get another one out of it. Um, and then I take them into the house. Uh, out here, uh, the wood's sort of 15, 16% at best. So the wood for the box has been in the house, rough turned or, or drying in the house. Um, and so that's around 11% somewhere around there so I want this to be the same percent as whatever I'm, I'm gluing it into so I take these into the house and it doesn't take long they're only thin uh, uh, and just leave them on the side and let them acclimatize and lose that few percent of moisture so with your scrap piece of wood face, faced off I'm just going to glue uh, the, this onto that with some hot melt glue um, there's a few other techniques you could use I think you could even pin it between your centers double-sided tape, uh, but I find hot melt best. And what you want to do is you want to glue the face. So you can see on this one, I hope the camera can see that. Yeah, you can see that's the best, that's the face, that's the best book match. And then you can see on the reverse look how the book match has started to drift and 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 um, loop, you know, move up and down and lose uh, that perfect image. So you want to actually put the glue onto the face and glue the face onto the block so that you can turn it into a disc and prepare the back and you're going to reduce the thickness a little bit ready to go into the top of your box. Um, and the only thing you want to be, be conscious of is having the middle, the joint, in the, in the as best you can in the middle of the scrap piece of wood. So I just sort of eyeball it uh, and look at the gap. Um, but because it's hot melt you have to move a bit quick because uh, you want the hot melt glue really hot and you want to get it stuck while it's still really hot. So it all happens a bit quick, but it's only hot melt. If you get it in the wrong place, you can peel it back off and redo it. But that's that's what you're looking for. And that's it. Just hold that for a few seconds, just while it grabs it. And then we'll have a look with the pencil, see how close I got it. That's 
so then just with a pencil and that's that's fine the camera can see that yep yeah, that's fine that's in the middle so what you then then do is with a sharp I use a sharp spindle gouge but you could use a scraper or parting tool uh, is just get this into a, a circle uh, and then we'll face it off. Still got a little bit of a flat area. That's it, that's perfectly round. So you want to make sure that this, uh, this surface is, is as flat as it can be, nice and parallel. You don't want it uh, wedge shaped for when you want to glue it into the, the recess in your lid of your box. Check that's flat or slightly concave. Um, the thickness of the disc is a tricky one, really. You don't want it that thin um, that that it becomes transparent or, or or it can break, especially with spalted wood. It's not the strongest, but you don't want it that thick that by the time you put the recess down into the lid of your box, um, especially on the smaller boxes, there's no internal you know, uh, hollow on the inside of the lid, you know, the lid ends up solid and very heavy uh, because you don't want on the inside of the lid, you don't want it to break through uh, and, and be visible from the inside. Um, so you have to sort of find that, that middle ground where you, you want some strength and some thickness, but you don't want it too thick uh, for, for putting it into the top of your lid. And also you have to allow um, for cleaning up the face when it's actually glued into the top of the lid which is only a, a millimetre or so, but, but just keep that in mind. So this one now is um, about four millimetres, um, and that's about as thick as I'd like it, really. Um, and so, and, it, and it, like I say, it's, it's slightly concave, which is fine. So I'm going to part it off now from the hot melt glue, and I part off into this scrap wood. I don't touch the, the disc, uh, but I'm sort of, I'm, I'm on the glue line, really. But I'm, I'm biased to the scrap wood side of it. So there's the disc, and there's a little bit of hot melt glue uh, still on the surface. 
that will just peel off or just scrape off with a, with a, um, a chisel. Um, but that's your disc prepared now, ready to glue into the lid of the box. So I'm now halfway through making the box. Um, the inside of the lid is finished and uh, the, the base is in the chuck and I've started to uh, prepare it to hollow and everything. The lid is a is a jam fit still onto the base um, so that I could turn it and, and cut this recess. The recess has been cut so it's, a, it's a, as good as fit as I can make it so that the insert glues in and I don't know if the camera can pick it up. The insert is literally just just a a little little bit proud of the surface of the black wood. Um, you don't want it too proud of the surface because then uh, when, when you're cutting it flush you can start to cut down through the perfect book, ma book match and into the uh, areas where it's starting to run out. So you literally just want to have enough proud to clean up this surface um, uh, with very light pass. So what I do now can't get it back out. What I do now is take the uh, the lid out of the lathe uh, and I'll, I'll go over to my bench uh, and we'll glue it in. So over at my bench uh, I prefer to use uh, an epoxy glue to glue the insert in. I find um, obviously it's very very strong and it's it's got that little bit of a give in the glue um, and so if there is any seasonal movement in the wood, um, you know, through the winter and the summer months, then the epoxy has got that little bit of give to take it. Uh, you can use other glues, but I use a five minute epoxy. So you, you don't need a lot. Um, and you just mix out equal parts, uh, hardener and resin. Uh, the inside of the lid is finished so I've just got it on a piece of kitchen towel just to protect it So be careful putting it into the recess, you don't want it, well it doesn't matter if it goes down the sides, but you don't want it getting anywhere near the uh, the inside which is finished. Um, so put a generous amount into the recess and what I do is I wipe a little bit up the sides of the recess. Uh, being epoxy it's gap filling so it will take out, if there is any slight differences in the fit of the disc to the recess it will just help disguise that so with the black wood you can't really see any discernible grain so it do, I don't think it really matters which way uh, you put the disc in with other woods you might want to line up the uh, the book match in a certain direction with the grain so with it on the side of my bench and the kitchen towel there, I just use a, uh, a quick clamp, try and get it in the centre and just give that very gentle, just to, just to hold it while the glue goes off. Right, we'll come back to that when it's cured and, and I'll show you how to throw it up on the lathe. So the, the glue is now cured, uh, so we're ready to trim the top, so jam it back onto the, the base. Now you could do this with a, uh, a bowl gouge, a spindle gouge, uh, a negative rate scraper, but, but I'm just wanting to sort of get everything flush um, before I sand. So it's just a, a very light pass because um, obviously this is end grain spalted beech. Uh, it's very easy to tear it out. 
and uh, but I just want to get that surface nice and flush now. Oh. That's pretty good. So just move this so you can see. So there's the uh, the insert set in. There we go. Um, and and that's it really. That's that's ready for sanding uh, and finishing. And and from this point on. You, you just complete the box as you normally would, um, and which I show that process in, in uh, other videos on my channel. Um, thank you very, very much for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this. Um, if you want to follow the, the projects I make, um, if you, you can follow me on Instagram, uh, Facebook or Twitter. Uh, I'll put some links in the description of the video.